This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Coming up on April 23rd at Wembley Stadium, in a bout that will be televised in the U.S. on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Tyson Fury will defend the Lineal Heavyweight Championship along with his WBC belt against Dillian White. Both Fury and White have boxed twice since the beginning of 2020. Since then, White had a pair of matches against Alexander Povetkin, and Fury had a pair of fights against Deontay Wilder to close out their thoroughly entertaining trilogy. This all started back in February 2020 when Fury dominated Wilder in their long-awaited rematch. Fury surprised the champion by making him fight off the back foot. Fury dropped Wilder in round 3, and he dropped him again in round 5, and the fight was ultimately stopped by Wilder's corner in round 7. White and Povetkin battled it out for the first time in August 2020. White dropped Povetkin twice in round four, where he appeared to be in complete control of the action. White looked to build on this momentum, but Povetkin launched a missile of an uppercut that leveled the body snatcher in round five. Those two had a rematch in March of last year, but this time White seized command early and never looked back. White dropped him in round four, Povetkin beat the count, but he was very wobbly and the referee stopped the fight just as Povetkin's corner threw in the towel. In October of last year, Fury and Wilder squared off for the third time and it was a wild one. Fury dropped Wilder in round three, Wilder dropped Fury twice in round four, and then Fury again dropped Wilder in round 10, and yet again in round 11. And by this point, the referee had seen enough and he jumped in to wave it off. White is getting his first opportunity to fight for a major world title, and many observers believe this is long overdue. White has been a fixture inside the top 10 for a number of years now, and he has faced a number of fellow top contenders during that stretch with mixed success. White lost against Anthony Joshua all the way back in 2015, before AJ had become a two-time unified champion. Dillian's most significant victory was probably when he won a unanimous decision against former WBO champion Joseph Parker. And then he also holds a couple of solid wins against Derek Chisora, and a win against the then undefeated Oscar Rivas, and also good wins against Robert Hellenius and Marius Vach. And of course, he avenged his devastating knockout loss against Povetkin. It's not the best resume in today's heavyweight landscape, but White definitely has one of the better ones. The thing of it is, White has a lot of wear and tear for someone who will be 34 on fight night. Beyond that, while White has proven to be a very good heavyweight in today's scene, he has had his fair share of struggles against other contenders. When I look at Dillian White, I see a talented, consistent heavyweight, but I don't know that he's ever exhibited that extra something special needed to succeed at the elite level. And against Tyson Fury, he is facing the best of the best at heavyweight, and I'm not sure that White is bringing a whole lot to the table that Fury hasn't already comfortably dealt with. When you look at the long and dominant reign of Vladimir Klitschko, a reign that lasted nearly 10 years where Vladimir made 18 consecutive title defenses, having unified three of the big four alphabet belts, as well as establishing a new heavyweight lineage following the retirement of Lennox Lewis, the history books will show that Tyson Fury was the man who ended that dominant reign. Tyson Fury was also the man who ended the five-year reign of the powerhouse puncher known as Deontay Wilder, who had made 10 consecutive title defenses, including the only blemish on Fury's record, the draw in their first encounter. But Fury put an exclamation point on his rivalry with Wilder when he stopped them in their second and third encounters. And those are easily the two most impressive heavyweight championship victories in the last few years. 
Whereas White has never exhibited that extra dimension to his game that helps define heavyweight greatness, Fury has, and he has overcome adversity in the midst of a heated battle with the highest stakes. Now the past doesn't necessarily dictate the future, and the one saving grace for White, as I see it, is that Fury himself has a lot of wear and tear. The Wilder trilogy alone was a taxing proposition, particularly in their third and final matchup. Mix in the fact that Fury is no spring chicken himself, and Fury is known to balloon up and down in weight, and maybe, just maybe, Fury is ripe for the taking. After all, White has exhibited a lot of heart, and not just in terms of rising to his feet after being dropped, but even in terms of coming back to avenge a devastating knockout loss, like the one he suffered at the hands of Povietkin. I think the key for White is to try and form a bit of a blueprint based on what Wilder was trying to do early in his third fight with Fury. Wilder was having success targeting Fury's ample midsection, and this was smart. Fury has outstanding elusive head and upper body movement to go along with his deceptively quick feet. But that big body doesn't move a whole lot when compared to his otherwise overall elusive rhythm. Wilder couldn't sustain the body assault for long, but when he was targeting Fury's body, Fury didn't seem to like that. For White to have a real chance here, he is going to need to fight a smart, disciplined effort, and a consistent investment downstairs is essential for him to maximize his chances of victory. But I just do not believe that White will be able to have prolonged success against Fury, because I believe Tyson Fury is just too damn versatile for Dillian White. I wouldn't be surprised if this one winds up resembling Fury's victories against Chisora many years ago, but the bottom line for me is that Fury is an extremely smart fighter, he's proven his toughness beyond reproach in his epic trilogy with Wilder, and Fury excels regardless of the fighting range. He's good at boxing from long range and providing a slippery target. He's scrappy whenever things transition into mid-range, especially when the action heats up. And he is likewise excellent at mauling guys in close, where he uses his gigantic body to wear down his foes. And whenever something isn't working for Fury, he is usually good at changing things up and giving an opponent a new look. So for my official prediction, I am taking Tyson Fury by 10th round stoppage. But what the hell do I know? Whatever happens, I am looking forward to it, and may the best man win on that night. April 23rd on ESPN Plus Pay-Per-View. Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. Who do you think will win? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.